you doing? Happy Monday, everyone. Today is October 9th. It is live stream number 72. Thank you so much for taking the time to join today's live stream. It's Monday. Hope that you have a great week planned. Um, today, we're going to talk about add-ins and nesting. Um, we are going to follow a little bit up on um, on Fridays where we talk about CAM. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about follow up on Friday's live stream, uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I got an awesome email from, uh, Rob Pichinich, I think you pronounce your last name. I'm sorry, Rob, uh, who sent me a great email talking about how he brings, uh, his files into fusion to work when it comes to uh, layout and routing and things like that. And one of, and I'm going to show you kind of how he he does it uh, today. But uh, the main thing that came out of that was he is using also a add-on uh, that is called Nestor. And um, I'm going to show you today how you uh, load that add-in and uh, how to use that add-in. But it's a pretty cool uh, add-in. Now it's a nesting, but it's it's a what would you call that? Have automatic nesting. Half automatic? Half automatic. It's not fully like it's going to place it on a sheet where it's going to figure out what the least amount of material is. You still have to do that. But it does a very nice job taking your assembly and kind of like get it down flat, stuff like that. So that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. It's number 72, people. Um, I actually planned out the whole week. So I uh, see we already got 44 people in here. We're one minute in. Um, so thank you everybody for taking the time to join the live stream. If you're watching the recording on YouTube afterwards, also thank you. So uh, this week, I've actually planned them all out. So I just want to run through that quick. So if you are just here for the add-ins and nesting, just two seconds. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about joints. I'm going to give you three reasons why joints are better. Better than what? Well, if you're coming from another uh, CAD system, three reasons why it's better. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to take uh, the simulation we talked about static simulation the last time for beginners, and we're going to talk about nonlinear for beginners. Thursday, we're going to talk about working with STLs. All you 3D printer guys who want to work with STLs, well, we're going to talk a little bit about the mess workspace inside of Fusion. And then Friday, we're going to do CAM, as we now are doing every Friday. It's going to be moved one hour later, just say that up front. And we're going to talk about how do you program the other side of your part. So when you have machine one side and you flip it over, how do you program the other side? That's all about next week. Okay, I'm three minutes in, two minutes in. Talk too much. Let's start talking about today's topic about add-ins and Nesta. So like I said, Rob uh, Pichinich sent me an awesome email uh, about how he does the whole thing about bringing assemblies in to put them flat on a router or water jet or plasma table, kind of like breaking your assemblies down. So we're going to kind of like pick up from there. That gives me an opportunity to talk about uh, the add-ins that exists for um, for Fusion. If you've never looked at this, you, you probably should just spend five minutes with a cup of coffee. There's a couple of different ways you can get to it uh, with the default install. You can either go up and click the little file icon up here and you will see that there's a Fusion App Store button, access. The exact same one is also over here. Same thing. So uh, multiple places, to okay, to so the same place. We'll just open up a website where there's all different kinds of add-ins that you can download for Fusion 360. Uh, what is pretty dang cool and you should definitely go in here and look at those. Now, be aware of that all these, depending on which one you're clicking on, uh, some of them cost a little bit of money, a couple of bucks. Some of them are free. Um, and these are developed, some of them are developed by actually Autodesk. Some of them are developed by um, like third parties. And most of them have some really good like help documentation about how to get them uh, installed and so forth. Now, the app that I want to talk about today, is, I don't know if it was called an app. It's actually a script. Uh, it's called Nesta. It's what it's called. I'm calling up a YouTube video right here. Now, if you go down in the description area of this video, you will find this YouTube video. It is right now named 
Patrick's walkthrough. Um, and Patrick Rainsbury is the one who actually developed this nester that we're going to talk about today, what is a script. Um, and you will also see there's a link out to his uh, GitHub page because that's actually where you're going to get it. And I want to take you through how I installed it uh, because if you're anything like me, when it comes to installing add-ins and messing around with, with uh, kind of like placing them in the right folders, I always get a little like, um, that's not my, my strong suit, so I want to do that. Uh, so again, thank you, Rob, for, for highlighting this app. Now, Patrick Rainsbury, who developed this one, uh, this is on his own side. Now, Patrick actually works for Autodesk. So just so you know, he's a good friend of mine bright guy you just know one of these guys was just so smart and he have created a lot of these different add-ins including this nester that will let you flatten things out so let's go in and i'll show you how to install this specific one and then you can go into the app store and and, and install other ones now this one here is not on the app store you have to go out to github and get it so down in the description area you will find a link that is called download net net Nestor. Why am I saying Napster? Nestor. Napster or something else. That was music side. Remember that one? Um, let's get to it. So you go out, you go in the description area of this video, you will see a link to go to github.com, uh, tap near, tap near Nestor, and you click the download link. Now, when you click the download link, then it's going to come down in your downloads folder. Now, I'm going to do this for Windows. And I will also say, um, I'm going to say this with the camera on. I love to help everybody I can help. If you have any issues and you're, you're following my instructions like I'm doing here and you're still having issues, I probably can't help you. <laughs> say that. But I felt like I wanted to show you how to inst I want to install it because I'm like the guy who needs to follow these. So uh, download the, the, the download link. Right click and I just do extract all right to this same place the downloads folder that's what i normally do um so now i have in my let me close this out in my um downloads folder here i now have my zipped folder and then i have this one unzipped okay if i double click into that you will see that there's like a folder structure right here um so this is actually what we need and i can see that rob is in the live stream right now Hey, that's cool. So any questions about this, uh, Rob can definitely, uh, you know, add, add your two cents, Rob. So um, here is this folder unzipped. Now we need this one in the right place on in Fusion 360 for Fusion 360 to actually use this one. The easiest way to do that, that I have found, is to go up here to add-ins Click the drop down, click the script. You want, well, you could actually just click this button up here. Click this one. Um, that's gonna open up this little window. And anytime I see things like these, I get a little like, I'm not, you know, a programmer. But here's the cool thing. Click on my scripts, the little plus sign next to it. It's gonna open up a folder. Now, right now, all I wanna do with this folder is I wanna click right out here next to the name and I want to copy this because this is where I want all my stuff to go to. This is kind of like, I I guess this is like the window from Fusion into this folder. So I'm going to just do a control C for copying this string. Okay. And then I'm going to just cancel out of this again. Close this out. And then I'm going to go back into my Windows Explorer. Now, if you didn't know this, if you hold down the Windows command and E, you will open up a second window. Ooh, that was a little Windows trick. Windows button plus E. Let's open up another Explore window. Um, now click up here and paste that link in. Control V, right? So that is there. Hit Enter, and it's going to open up this folder. Now that was empty. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all this content right here and do Control All to highlight it all. Control C to copy it all, and then I'm going to paste it right in here. Control V for paste. A lot of Windows commands. Maybe this should be a Windows live stream. So now I just pasted them all into my app data roaming, Autodesk, Autodesk Fusion 360, API, scripts folder. Okay. Um, 
So let's exit out of that. And if this is going too fast for you, don't forget, this is going to be up on YouTube in like 30 minutes or so. Now, when you've done this, exit out of Fusion. Close Fusion down because we need to restart it up again to get all these uh, apps uh, up. So uh, while that is restarting, I just click down to download and then you get it in your downloads folder, extract it, and then uh, go inside of Fusion, find that by hitting that little plus sign, find the where your script folders is. Now, when we open Fusion back up here, <laughs> gives me a chance to get a glass of water. Uh, you will see that when we go back into add-ins, you will actually see that we got kind of like a couple of things inside of our Fusion script here. Now, this is what I do. Go to add-ins and you will see right here is Nestor. Click on it once and then hit run. However, you could check run on startup and it will always run. That depends on how much of uh, this kind of nesting you want to do. I'm just going to click run and nothing happens. Don't be sad. It's all good. If you click the little add-ins right here, you will see that we now have a link to Nestor. And if I click on that, the ad or the add-in actually opens up. Patrick's awesome add-in opens up here. Okay. So uh, let's talk about how this works and how Rob is using what we talked about Friday. So if you didn't watch Friday's li live stream and you want to know more about this, um, how um, to use like with laying things out on water jets, routers kind of things, watch Friday's live stream. So I, in this is where we left off in, in Friday's. We had kind of like, we have this box. I'm just going to open that up by itself. Uh, we had this box that we created on Wednesday, Thursday last week. So if you want to see how you model this up, Wow, we got live streams on everything. We made this little box here, right? Um, so the idea of Friday was we wanted to take this box and we wanted to uh, lay it out on a sheet of plywood. What is this we have over here? And we talked about using templates. I'm not going to get too much. I'm not going to get in depth with that. That's Friday's live stream. So let me just exit out of that. Now, what Rob does uh, when it comes to the old layout. So I showed two things Friday. I showed one where you continued within the original box uh, and doing everything parametrically in there. That was the one way to do it. Another way I showed it was that you have like these plywood templates. You, you bring the box into into the box into the plywood templates and you kind of like uh, you're kind of like dividing up. The first one is kind of like following you model up the box and in the same file you do every, all your cam. The second one shows how you bring that box into to the to the plywood sheet and lay it out there now um rob does it with a third third way to do it he actually takes a a standard file there's nothing in it and he brings these two files into it so just a third way to do it the 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 benefit of the way that that uh, Rob does it. One of the benefits is he actually does this without capturing history because what, what Rob says is, you know, I'm kind of like bringing everything to the router. So he wants a third file uh, where he controls all in. And Rob, you can just add whatever you want in the in the live stream to add to that. I'm going to try to keep this short. So um, in here, you can right click and you can say do not capture history. What means that there's nothing remembered in here. Now, the first thing you then got to do is you got to save the file. So you probably want to call it something, right? Router, part, whatever, box, whatever, whatever, and save that. And then uh, you bring in the two files inside of here. So we can take the plywood, right click, insert into current design. So that gets brought in uh, by a, a linked component. I'm just going to say okay to that. Um, and you can either choose to break this or not break this. Rob prefers to break it. Um, but that is more if he's got to kind of like cut a sheet in half and, and things like that. If he has a rest material and things like that. Uh, and then we're going to bring in the, the box itself. So bring that one in. So here comes the box and now you can see that when I'm bringing it in like this, it's a little bit upside down just because now it actually kind of goes back to the original 
kind of like lay out the sign, but that has nothing to do with what we're going to do here. One thing we have to do uh, in here when we bring the box in is we're going to suppress the joints. We are not going to delete them. Don't delete them. Just suppress them in here. And we did that Friday too. Okay. So now I'm ready to show you this cool script for nesting a nester, kind of like laying things out. So we have our sheet of plywood or whatever you want to be your, your stock in here. And, um, and now we want to kind of like lay this out on, on the table. So you go up and you activate Nestor. And the first thing it asks for is, uh, the base plate. Now I should probably actually before I run it, I should probably ground one of these, at least the, the plywood here should probably be ground, not to be having any chance of moving around. So you activate a uh, Nestor and the first thing it's asking for is select a base face. So that will be my top sheet of my plywood. This is like my, my base face here. Then what it's asking for is the faces that we want to have all our plates to lay perpendicular to the base face or touching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here. I'm just going to select all the faces on uh, this box here. And you should probably think about what side you want up or what side you want down compared to if you have anything that needs to be milled or slotted or something like that. So you select all your faces. Next, you select a direction. This used to be default a um, in the Y direction. You will actually see that I also left a, a link down in the... Um, in the description of the video out to Patrick's own video where he talks about uh, this. So you should definitely go out and check that out because that's the developer himself. Um, but in this version of the video, it, it does the Y axis. It does not have uh, this select direction. So he added this later on. So you can choose if you want to be the Y or the X. We're just gonna select uh, this axis right here. And then you can choose a distance between the parts. So how long do you want between the parts? So I'm just going to leave it at one inch. I'm going to hit OK. And just like that, you will see that all those components got placed in here uh, with one inch uh, between, between them. And now uh, you actually could go in uh, here and right click and use like the move command. Um, and you should be able to go in here now and uh, select them all, right? And now we can kind of like uh, lay them out the way that that we want, just like this, um, you know, get them out on the sheet. And if you had some odd shapes, you could start moving those individually uh, and, 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 and kind of like lay it all out. I don't need that hinge in there, uh, down there, move that away. So uh, this is one way to kind of like lay out with with this nester uh, add in here to kind of like just break your assembly down. Um, Rob does a lot of like kitchen cabinets. So like think about you have suddenly a lot more, a um, lot more parts uh, in there. So I mean, this is a really time saver. So thank you to Patrick for actually creating uh, this script uh, to uh, be able to to do that. So I really hope, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was not going too fast through the whole installation, things like that. If it did do that, uh, then I apologize. Um, go back and rewatch the video. You know, you can pause kind of like as I'm going through uh, the different steps, but these add-ons is, you know, extremely awesome, right? I mean, that's just another add-in. I definitely want to thank Rob again for for not only taking the time to show me how he does it, but also for bringing Nestor up uh, to my attention as one we should go through in this live stream. 105 people on the live stream. That is uh, absolutely awesome. Um, absolutely appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to do that. Like I said, tomorrow we're gonna talk about joints. Um, if you have any issues with figuring out joints, that's what we're gonna attack tomorrow. We're gonna talk about some simulation this week on Wednesday. We're going to talk about working with STL files for all my 3D printing prints on Thursday. And then we're going to talk about some basics cam 
on Friday. But we're going to talk about that when you have machined your first operation, how do you flip the pot over and machine the second operation? Thank you so much, everybody, for taking the time to join the live stream. And also, of course, if you're watching the recording, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to watch that. Don't forget, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification next to it to make sure that you get uh, uh, notif notified about future videos. And as always, love if you will do the thumbs up or the thumbs down, depending on how you feel about the video. It's Monday, folks. Ready for another awesome week. I hope you have one, and I hope I see you tomorrow. I'm going to end the live stream or the broadcast. So if you're watching the recording, thank you so much. And jump into the live stream and say hi to uh, all the awesome people in there. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day.